Fairly recently, I did a video on the Nightcore tube, and I was really impressed. In fact, I was so impressed that after I'd made the video, I immediately went online and I ordered two more in the clear package, and I gave one to my brother, kept one for myself. It now lives on my keyring. It's a fantastic little flashlight. Very, very useful, particularly here on an island which is quite dark with very little street lighting. And at the time I wondered, is it real or is it a clone? And it seemed to be real. This, however, appears to be a clone. It's a lot cheaper, uh, but uh, it's not got the word Nightcore printed on it. Um, it is called the Tube, and it's got the same style of packaging. But the first clue, before I even take it out of the package, is that to uh, activate the bright mode on the Nightcore, you press the button twice. If you just press it once, it goes to dim mode. If you press it twice, it goes to the bright mode, and it is very bright. With this one, if you press it twice, it goes on and off. And what it actually does is it goes uh, high brightness off, low brightness off, high brightness off, low brightness off. Uh, this one, uh, if you held the button in, it would go up to full intensity flashlight. This one does the same. So that's, that's reasonable enough. Uh, this one, if you press the button once and then held it a second time, it would ramp up in brightness, and you could then let it go at any level of brightness. This one... Oop. Does that as well. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not very good, to be honest. It's not as good as the Nightcore, but... You know what? Let's open the package. That That's what I should have done before, isn't it, really? I'll open it like that because there is a little dotted line that suggests this is the way you should open it. I'm also a bit suspicious, even looking through the package, that the battery may be smaller. It looks smaller. Hmm. So, uh, yes, the double uh, double click mode. Yeah, that's it's kind of. If you if it's bright, it just goes off. But if it's in the low intensity setting, it starts ramping up. So the software is just completely screwed up here. Um, I've not tested yet whether this will automatically come on. You know what? I could test that right now, couldn't I? I'm just going to go and grab a USB lead here. Um, here's a USB lead. It's as hard to open as the, uh, the original tube. So let's plug in this USB lead. Now, the original tube had this really neat function. Ooh, this isn't winning points for that. Uh, it had the original function that uh, when you put it on to charge, if it was uh, lit when you did that, it would go out and then it would come on as an emergency light. So that's it charging. It's not doing that. It's not got that emergency light function. That What would it actually have happened with this one? Well, let's demonstrate what would have happened with this one. If I put this one into its low intensity and I plug it into charge, it immediately goes out. And when you unplug it, or when the power goes off, see, I'll unplug that end of the lead, it immediately comes on again at the last setting, like a little emergency light. It appears that this one does not have that function. Its software is just, it's not as good. So far, it is really not as good as original Nightcore. I mean, I suppose this is all in software. Let's try it, the full intensity setting. Nope, it's trying to charge and it's just not going out. So it's they've just got rid of that function. That's a huge fail right there. So let's uh, open this up and take a look inside. I've not tested it for runtime because I've not had it long enough. It's just arrived. So um, let's uh, get a screwdriver set in. And this time, as a special treat, I'll actually take the screwdriver bits out the way they're supposed to come out by pressing down at that end. Yeah, that's better. Got that wrong last time. You may notice the colour's a bit different uh, today. That's because I upgraded the software on the phone yesterday. The screws come out so much easier. That is so much different to the other one. It was really impossible getting the screws out on the other one. These are coming out very easily. Could even possibly have taken them out with my usual Poundland favourite screwdriver. Let's uh, just test that. So yeah, so I upgraded the software yesterday. Well, let's test that and see if I can take them out with my ordinary screwdriver. 
upgrade the software, and now the automatic uh, white balance, the white balance selection mode doesn't work on the open camera. So, yeah, you're going to get whatever colour comes out. I'm not sure what to do about that. I was thinking at the time, you know, I shouldn't really be upgrading the software in the phone because, well, you just never know what's going to happen. Right, let's take a look at the battery for a start. The battery has a protection circuit built in, just like the original. Uh, the battery, let's measure the battery. That's a, that's a good idea. Let's physically measure it. With the electronic digital caliper. This is where everybody says, it's not actually a caliper. That's fine. So thickness, uh, let's uh, make sure that's zero. Thickness is 3.68. Thickness is 3.96, so a bit thicker. Uh, width is about 16.57. This one is narrower. 14.26, and I think the lengths are roughly the same. No, the lengths, uh, this, is, this one's the original, is just bigger altogether. This one is using a 8-pin generic. This is not going to have a number on it, is it? It never has a number. Don't worry, uh, I'll be showing you a much closer... Oh, this one has got bugger all on it compared to the other one. Oh, this is really a cheap version. The other one had quite a lot of circuitry, right? Hold on, I'm going to take a picture of this and blow it up, just so you can see exactly how the difference is. Some pictures have been taken, some tests have been done. I've now got the capacity of the lithium cells in these, and the, the original Nightcore came in around about 70 milliamp hour. This one, rather sadly, the clone, comes in at between 30 to 35 milliamp hour. It's about half the capacity which uh, does explain the size difference, which is kind of disappointing. It means that uh, I actually, I recorded this part of the video yesterday, quite well, I say yesterday, quite early this morning, and decided to re-record it because I've discovered, you know, other things since and also done a full test in this. And there were certain details I missed out. Uh, one important detail is that when you turn this, the original night corner at low intensity, it pulses modulates the LED and, you know, even if I swipe that about quite a lot, it's quite hard to see. I can see a slight uh, dotting of the LED, but it, it overlaps at a modest speed. It's at quite a high speed pulse of modulation. The clone in its low intensity setting is not. It uh, strobes visibly. In fact, if you put them next to each other and swipe them side to side, uh, the clone is running about a fifth the frequency of the night core and it's just getting the border that, you know, if I move it so like this, I'm seeing a flicker and it's just a little annoying feature. It means that the software and the chip isn't running at a terribly high speed. Um, this is the circuit board out the original night core for reference. It contains a control chip, it contains a switching resistor, it contains the resistor for the LED and then some support circuitry. It is just a single blue LED for the charging. Uh, things that I'm not so keen on, the connections onto the circuit board, particularly the negative, is sort of just jammed in between components. Um, it's also got the charging control chip and, of course, the, uh, the socket for charging. The clone is actually better in regards to the spacing of the components. On one side of the circuit board, it's got the... LED with its big heat sink pin, the negative which comes down a quite a large fin, it's got the socket to charge. The wires all go directly onto large connections. In this case, this one goes onto the positive of the LED, um, and the negative goes onto one of the pins of the switch, which I'll show you in another picture. There's a standard 8-pin generic microcontroller chip with its decoupling capacitor across the, its rails. And then to control the LED, it's using a J3Y NPN transistor. That uh, marking means it's an S8050, which is a fairly general purpose NPN transistor. And it's using an unusually high base resistor of 6.8K. And the reason it's using such a high value of resistor appears to be to use the transistor itself as the current regulation to actually limit the current through the LED to around about 100 milliamps. And this has an odd effect in that as when you use it, it doesn't stay at full brightness for very long because as the voltage of the cell drops, the base drive also drops as well as the current dropping through the LED. And it, I'm not sure if it's just the the current dropping through the LED or if there's a compound effect, but it seems to tail off in intensity quite quickly. Um, so, 
The other side of the circuit board is dedicated entirely to the charging circuitry in the button. There's the other connection, the negative, going straight onto a lug. I quite like that. It makes it very easy to solder wire back on if something goes amiss. Um, the charge circuit is an LTH7, and that equated to, where is it? I've got the data sheet here, that equated to an LTC4054, which is just basically a current limiting uh, charging circuit with a few extra features. It's got the 4.2 volt upper limit uh, cutoff, but I have unwrapped the battery in this one and checked, and it does contain the DW01 uh, protection chip and the little double MOSFET package, so the battery itself does seem to have the protection. But this chip has uh, two prominent pins that we're interested in. Aside from that, it's got a pin called program, which if you use a resistor, you can set the charge current. In this case, it's set quite high. This thing char starts charging at 350 milliamps, which given it's only a 30 milliamp cell, is quite high. Um, basically, they're charging 10C, um, but then that tails down quite quickly. So it's got the uh, program pin for setting the current, and it's got a charge indicator pin, uh, which is used to signal back to circuitry when uh, a battery's charger when it's stopped. But in this case, it's being used to drive an LED. And fundamentally, it's got the upper voltage, 4.2, but you know that's already catered for in here. Um, and they <clears throat> have used it with a 4.7K resistor coming from the charge indicator pin, going along this track here, to the LED, and it runs the LED, a red LED, at very low intensity, but that's all it's needed just to show it is charging. There's the uh, charging current setting pin, which is 1.65K. It's marked 22B, which is a generic, it's a code, which means 1.65K uh, when you look it up against a chart. And it's very simple. I mean, button, charging chip, two resistors, and LED, and the other side being super simple. Uh, LED socket, um, the chip, and just a smash component, resistor capacitor, resistor. You can't get much simpler. It's very good in that sense. However, it's let down by the fact that the battery capacity is so low. It's got that low pulse of modulation speed. The LEDs, if I set uh, this one up to full intensity and this one up to full intensity, you can probably see that the clone is not as bright and that tails off quite quickly. Uh, still very usable, though. Um, the cases are completely compatible. I did port, I put the original circuit into this one and it fitted perfectly, so um, it is clearly based on the original design quite closely. So, um, <coughs> given the choice of the two, I would generally choose the original Nightcore uh, tube because it is just better in every way. It's the capacity, brightness, a functionality, particularly that little emergency light feature whereby, you know, when you, you turn it on and then you plug it into charge, it will come back on itself, which is nice. Uh, this one, if you plug it into, if you turn it on and you plug it into charge, it'll just stay lit, which I suppose it's nice that it can stay lit while it's charging. It could be considered a feature in a way. But um, really, um, the quality difference that they've skimped too much in the components in this one so versus the cost of this one now what was this one it was about seven or eight dollars i think and this the clone which came from a seller called besky b-e-s-s-k-y it was four dollars 35 so you know to be honest it, it doesn't represent good value at that price because it's much less features and capacity for you know, a bit less cash. I'd say that the price that I'd be happy to pay for something like this would be closer to about the $3 mark, comparing it to similar sort of products with a lithium cell in them. So, um, yeah, the original Nightcore is much better than the clones. So if you're tempted by a bargain Nightcore on eBay, just be aware that you might actually be getting a clone and look closely at the packaging for those clues, like the fact that the it doesn't have Nightcore uh, embossed into the case, although having said that, you just don't know what the, the people selling these are going to list these uh, with the images of. They could show a picture of the original or they could have another clone with that uh, Nightcore logo on it. You just really don't know what you're getting. Um, so it's a shame they've compromised like that, but you know, it just shows that, you know, original Nightcore best, clone not quite so good.